Hey everybody, welcome back to a new episode of One Mic, where I watch shit so you don't have to. And today I'm here to talk about season one, episode three of The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, entitled The Power Broker. So, uh, I really liked this episode. I mean, the, the, the season's been pretty good so far, but I thought this episode was probably the best one so far this season. I think they did a great job of setting up a whole lot of intrigue, but then also giving us like a really cool, like, spy thriller kind of episode. Uh, if you watch the deep dive episode that Axel and I did, and I'm going to reference that episode a couple of times during this episode, but if you remember that episode, we talked about the idea that this was kind of like feeling like a spy thriller and like they really, <laughs> they really went, I'm going to do it again. They went balls deep on the spy, th <laughs> on the spy thriller thing this week. I thought it was really cool when they went to this city, Madripoor, and it looked like it looked like something from like Blade Runner or something. I'm like, am I watching like like it felt like I was watching a totally different show. I'm like, man, this shit looks super fucking cool. It looks like some next some futuristic dystopian sci-fi type deal. They're like dressing up, gotta be in character, cool hand-to-hand -hand combat fight scenes. Like they really went deep on the uh on the spy stuff this week, and I really enjoyed it. Uh speaking of the hand-to-hand -hand combat stuff. Uh, that's one of the things that I like the most about the Captain and, Captain America movies is we get really good hand-to-hand -hand combat scenes. Like my favorite, probably my favorite action scene in all of the MCU is a hand-to-hand -hand combat scene between Cap and Bucky in the Winter Soldier. And we get to see Bucky do his thing in, the, in this bar or wherever they're at in, in uh, Madripoor. Really cool hand-to-hand -hand combat scene with Bucky. We see Sharon, Agent 13. She gets to do one later at the shipyard. So like, and and when I say hand-to-hand -hand combat, I mean like, yeah, they were shooting and shit like that. But I mean like, you know, something that's a little bit more grounded and not like uh, the first episode where Sam's flying around in his uh, in his suit being chased or whatever. And even the even the even though the the truck scene from last week, I would say is kind of technically a hand-to-hand -hand combat scene. But I don't know. It's just. It's just something different, I guess, when you get to see Bucky do it. <laughs> it just feels like it's a it's a cooler thing. I don't know. I, I don't know why I'm try, trying to draw a distinction between last week's truck scene and this week's uh, bar and shipyard scenes. But I don't know. I just thought they were way, cool, <laughs> way cooler this time. I don't know what to say. But yeah, man, the spy thriller stuff was really cool this week. I really enjoyed that. Uh, I really enjoyed some of the funny moments they had. I mean, I, I'm sure, like I mentioned during the deep dive... Funny moments, cool action sequences. That's going to be the hallmark of this show. And I really liked when they talked about um, uh, Marvin Gaye's Trouble Man album. And, and Zemo says something like, uh, "It's a, it, it captures the African-American experience. It's like, it's one thing to hear a white guy speak like that regarding black music. It's another thing when it's like a German supervillain. <laughs> it's, it's like, okay, that was, that was a nice touch that they that they did that. And then um, I think my favorite, my favorite funny moment of the episode was when uh, Zemo, I don't, I guess, I don't know, I guess he stole this car. I don't know. He found it in one of the shipping containers and he pulls up as Sharon Buck and Sam are emerging from one of the other shipping containers and they hop in and Sam goes, you're not going to move the seat up, are you? <laughs> and Buck's like, nope. And I, I love that callback because that's not just a callback to a scene that's a callback to, I don't know if everyone else felt this way, but that's a callback to when I realized that uh, Bucky and Sam have a fun relationship that I'm really enjoying. So if you don't remember this scene, there's a scene in uh, Winter Soldier, and it's actually, this, uh, this involves Sharon too. It's when Sharon and Cap uh, first kiss, and you see uh, Sam in the front seat, Bucky in the back. He asks him to move his seat up. Sam says no. And then he scoots over and you can kind of like, it's, it's, it's a funny scene with very little dialogue, just mainly with facial expressions. And they cut the Sam and, and, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, Cap and Sharon talking and then they kiss and then it cuts back to them and you see them just smiling going like, yeah. <laughs> so like, I think that was the moment when I realized I was like, I like these two together. And I feel like in my head, that's the moment when uh marvel studios decided like we need to make we need to do something with these two get them into something together so 
Um, I really like that callback because it wasn't just a callback in general. It was a callback to uh, what I feel is the moment that sp spurred this series. Like, this is why we have this series because of that moment. That, and, and I think everybody liked that moment. I liked that moment. So that was pretty cool. And then I also like the scene where Sam takes the shot of like the, I guess I'm guessing that was a snake heart inside of a, uh, inside of some liquor, whatever. I like how he just goes, mm. <laughs> like he's got, like, it's almost like he's psyching himself up. And then it's like, Sebastian Stan did a really good job, I think, of, of trying to simultaneously play the Winter Soldier but also kind of like side eye, like, is he going to do it? Is he going to do it? <laughs> like, I thought it was a very subtle uh, facial performance from uh, Sebastian Stan in that scene. So that was pretty cool, too. Um, so I also liked the um, the hand to hand scene with Sharon in the shipyard. And, I, and the reason I'm bringing that up again is because I thought that scene was. Uh, surprisingly more violent than I would have expected in this show. Like you kind of like expect that in the movies, but on Disney Plus on a TV show, I kind of felt like I was, I was a little surprised at how violent that was. How many times the word shit was said in one form or another in the ep in this episode? But hey, I mean, Marvel wants to have all the <laughs> all, own all the properties in the world and utilize them. You're gonna have to. You, you can't kitty them all up. They can't all be Mickey Mouse, right? But uh, I did have a couple of issues with this episode and I'm going to talk about those issues because I, I want to walk you through this the same way that I experienced it because I'm watching the episode and I'm, I'm taking my notes and I'm like ah, I don't know if I like that that doesn't really make much sense I don't know you know blah, blah 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 I don't really know how I feel about this and then as the episode progressed uh I got the 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 the, the thoughts got rolling around in my head and it made me wonder if uh my issues are less things that I feel the show fucked up and more so uh things that are evidence of the theory that I have. So um all of the issues that I had all kind of collectively happened around the same time period of the episode. Uh the first thing was the fact that Sharon was even in Madripoor in the first place. Like all the places in the world for Agent 13 to be and she just so happens to be in Madripoor at the same time as Bucky and Sam and Zemo and just so happens to be around at the exact moment that they need her. And I'm like, I'm thinking at the time, I'm like, come on, man. Like, you expect me to believe that this is a, a complete coincidence? But they never address it. No one says anything. And they just kind of leave it there. And prior to us even seeing Sharon, actually, uh, when they meet with the Selby individual, and quick side note, Every character that they referenced is actually from the comics. But I, I, I kind of want to have an Easter egg thing that I kind of want to go over at the very, very end real, real, real quick. So I'll save that for then. So they go to visit the Selby person to try to find the, the super soldier serum or, or who made it, how it came to be, whatever. And Selby gives them some information. Sam takes a call. Uh, why the fuck was your phone on when you're supposed to be undercover? I don't know. She makes him take it on speaker. And, and Selby realizes that this is a setup and says for them to be killed. And then out of nowhere, a bullet comes through and kills Selby. And no one knows who that is. No one knows who did it, but they proceed as if this is completely normal. And then um, immediately we see that there is now a bounce. It's, there's a, like somebody gets a message on their phone that says something like, uh, Selby dead, uh, bounty for her killer, something like that. And then as they're walking out and walking through the street, immediately people start shooting at them. And I'm like, well, okay, one, how did this bounty get out so fast? Two, how does anyone know who her killers are, what they look like, or where they are? So, like, all of this seemed very strange to me. Like, like, where is all this coming from? Like, I'm just supposed to believe that this, like, okay, yeah, there's a, there's a bounty on them, but on who? It just says bounty on, bounty on her killers. There's no picture. There's no, uh, this was the last time we saw them. Like, nothing like that. But people just come out of the woodwork and start shooting at them. Like, how are you supposed to know that those are people that killed her? So, like, I felt that this was a very kind of, like, sloppy uh, moment in this show. I'm just like, like, none of this shit makes sense, man. And, and, and Sharon just, and then later Sharon pops up. And it's like, okay, where the fuck did she come from? She saves them in the alley after people start shooting at them or whatever for the bounty. And it's like, okay, this is just, all of this is just really weird. So fast forward to later in the episode. And after the whole scene where, uh, that I mentioned earlier, where Sam gets in the car and Bucky gets in the car and then they say that, you know, we'll, we'll, 
Uh, you're not going to move the seat up, blah, 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 blah. They ask Sharon to come with them. She says she can't. And then she leaves. And then she gets on the phone and says, with someone we don't know, and says, we got a couple of big problems. A couple of big problems. I'm like, I'm wondering, like, is she referring to Sam and Bucky as, as, as problems? And then it made me wonder, not only who is she talking to, but how has she been so, like, again, all the issues that I had, where did she come from? All this kind of stuff. What if Sharon is the power broker or Sharon's working with the power broker? So the reason I had this theory was that one, Sharon really had an issue with heroes. Like she was, you know, railing on, calling him, calling them hypocritical, all that good stuff. She has a problem with superheroes. Uh, she, again, she randomly is in Madri Madripoor. How the fuck is she there? She shows up at the perfect time. The bounty thing comes out immediately, which she would be able to send it out because she would be the one who knows who did it. And she would be the one who knows when it happened. She would also be the one who knows what they look like, where they are and how they did you know, all that stuff. She has all that information. So all these things that seem like plot holes could be done to cover up Sharon's true motives. So I, I feel like she's either the power broker, working with the power broker, or hunting the power broker. Uh, I feel like hunting is the least likely one and that she's actually possibly a bad guy just because of how she railed on heroes and seemed to be upset about not being able to come back to the United States. So um, quick little theory I had there, but we'll see how that plays out. And we'll probably talk about that more on the deep dive. And then lastly, the couple of Easter eggs, the, um, like I said, all, everybody who's named is canon. Like these are from the comics. Madripoor is not a real city, but it's real within the comic. I noticed an emblem on the, on the gate to the, what's it called? GSR, G, the Gl Global Repatriation something. So GRC committee. Yeah. GRC building, the supply depot that the Flag Smashers robbed. I noticed that it had something that looked like an X-Men logo on it. And Madripoor is from like the X-Men continuity. So I found that interesting. Uh, what else? So I mentioned the three people that are all connected. Like they're all, uh, not connected, they're all canon. I'm sorry. Uh, they all exist in the Marvel Universe. I'm not going to go into who they are, but uh, within the Marvel Universe, that is. But um, uh, the was the, the name that was given for uh, Conrad Mack for, for Sam... That's a person, uh, William, uh, what was his name? The, the scientist that created the serum. Uh, he's a real person in the MCU. Uh, Sh Selby's a real person in the MCU. All that stuff's re real with, I'm sorry, in the MCU, in the comics. I'm sorry. Uh, real within the comics. So all that stuff was pretty cool. Uh, my theory on, uh, from the deep dive of Zemo possibly not being a bad guy at all in this, but maybe just helping them find the bad guy who appears to be the power broker. That theory is looking pretty good right now, except for I don't know why Zemo killed the scientist. That's the only thing that's holding me up. I'm like, is he involved in this somehow still? So, But up to that point, I was like, oh, I might be right about this. And uh, I also feel like uh, I was right from the deep dive episode about the Flag Smashers essentially being good guys. Uh, they blew up that GRC building, but uh, Carly made the point, like, that's the only language these people understand. They were hoarding fucking supplies that could have been used to help the less fortunate. And, you know, it's one of those one of those situations where it's people uh, with the right intentions doing the wrong things, but for the right reasons. So um, really like this episode. There's a lot to get into for the deep dive. I've got some good notes ready. So we'll uh, Axel and I will be recording that on Sunday. That'll be in your feeds or on, on this YouTube channel on Tuesday. And I'll see you guys next week. Peace.